Yes, I'm talking today about the Clearinghouse project, which is a uh, joint project um, between Europe and China. And uh, the point of the project is to look towards improving urban living conditions in both continental situations. Um, I'm speaking today on behalf of a group of uh, researchers, so I'd like to thank them for their contribution. Um, the basis of our investigation is around the concept of nature-based solutions. Um, I've uh, put here a slide uh, that is draws on the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Um, and they say that a nature-based solution is an action uh, to provide sustainably manage and restore natural uh, uh, ecosystems, et cetera, address societal challenges, uh, provide a set of tools. And I think importantly, nature-based solutions, the plural word is important here. They are not a single action, but represent many actions. I think we all know, and um, this is a theme that runs through conferences and seminars and workshops of this kind, is that we are um, urbanizing at an alarming rate, um, that the planet is going through um, a significant environmental change and that the cities are amongst the most vulnerable. The trend, all predictions suggest that urbanization will uh, increase continuously, at least until 2050, maybe beyond. Um, cities are the hub of global economic activity, but also the hub of uh, global energy consumption. And as we've um, uh, heard already this morning, was one hopes that the tide might be turning, um, urbanization does generally lead to a decline in the amount of green space, and normally that is a uh, consequence of the pace of development. So let's pose a question, where can trees and urban forests help? And uh, it's helpful here, I think, to use the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I've highlighted three where I think urban forestry can make a significant contribution it likely can make a contribution to all. Uh, in terms of good health and well-being, Sustainable Development Goal 3, Sustainable Development Goal 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities, and Sustainable Goal 15, which is life on land. So trees and urban forests, how do they actually uh, provide or work as a nature-based solution? Well, it really is not uh, stuff of NASA or the European Space Agency this. this is simply to say the trees in particular deliver most of these benefits simply through their normal biotic activities but equally through their social and economic benefits one might call this the anthropocentric function and so a good way to deliver these is to consider them within the realm of ecosystem services and the ecosystem services they deliver However, there are challenges out there. Historically, trees and forests and urban areas have been undervalued in respect of the services they deliver to societies. You can see here a campaign that hit the international news from the United Kingdom, where through uh, what I think we could call an error of planning judgment, uh, the city of Sheffield gained a very bad reputation for cutting down mature trees. In urban areas, existing policies and practices for the governance, management and conservation of trees and forests clearly needs to change. And although in meetings like this, we hear evidence of change, it's still not widespread enough. And our understanding of different approaches across countries and continents uh, can help uh, in terms of mutual learning and improve the strategies we have for urban forestry. And that was the basis upon which we were granted funding by the European Commission and uh, more recently by the Chinese MOST uh, for the Clearinghouse project, looking at urban forestry as a nature-based solution. So a little bit more about how we are addressing and overcoming the challenges. Well, we're working across both research and innovation. We're working in China and Europe, we're providing open access to the knowledge gained. We're trying to bring together practitioners and strategists in cities, as well as researchers in the sector. 
and we're providing guidelines already mentioned today. Those like guidelines are something that I'll be leading on over the next 18 months or so. Um, in terms of um, where we've reached so far in the project, there is an innovative new technology, uh, sorry, type, typology, a conducting of a large public uh, perception uh, survey on urban forestry in both China and Europe, now complete, but data still in analysis. There are case studies available already on the Nature Network program, uh, which is available um, uh, on the internet. And we've already completed an important analysis of governance, institutional economic frameworks for urban forestry as a nature-based solution. So um, a little bit about the Sino-European um, um, situation. What we found so far, and you will see here from Fermilab in the US, um, the diagram on ecosystem services, just to help position you. We certainly identified that there are scale differences. So far in our cross-continental comparison, we've discovered that the interventions in China on balance tend to be of a larger scale than those in Europe. And that might have to do in large uh, uh, measure by the fact that space is of a particular premium in Europe. Secondly, it's quite clear to us now that there is evidence to suggest that the China Forest City Programme is a global leader when it comes uh, to um, tackling uh, urban forestry as an NBS. And in particular, we think that the KPIs, the so-called key performance indicators that have been developed for that programme have global resonance. Um, what is also interesting, although to some of us not greatly surprising, is that cultural ecosystem services that you will see in the bottom left of the Fermilab diagram are perhaps rather stronger in the European situation, whereas the regulating services um, are stronger in the Chinese situation. And given the fact that clean air is a particular uh, problem in China that is perhaps one of uh, the least surprising findings we've come across. And I wanted to share very briefly, if I have time, some of the key findings. The first uh, finding is this, is that it's important that we elevate the role of urban trees above simple aesthetics, reinforce their role as critical urban uh, infrastructure and provide a clear linkage to the delivery of ecosystem services. That involves an educational role as well, particularly for urban planners to make them aware of urban ecosystem thinking. Our second finding is that the concept of urban forestry as a nature-based solution remains a new concept. So there is a need for knowledge and capacity building amongst all engaged stakeholders. Our third uh, finding is that land availability for urban forestry seems to be a universal problem. It's very evident in both Europe and China. And by extension, I think we're fairly confident that this could probably be said for almost all urban situations globally. Our fourth finding is that the engagement of civil society, by which we're referring to social groups and citizens, is still relatively low. And for the most part, this suggests that the planning and management of urban forestry is still largely top down rather than bottom up. And this raises clearly an issue of governance, something that I know within the European arena, there is much talk at the moment about how to step up the idea of co-governance and bottom up involvement in nature-based solutions as a whole, rather than uh, specifically looking at urban forestry uh, on its own. Our fifth finding is that the engagement of the private sector is falling short of expectations. One minute warning, Clive. Okay, thank you. The long-term management of the urban forest is certainly an opportunity in this regard in terms of increasing the engagement of the private sector. The sixth finding is, I think, particularly important, that there is complementarity between different types of nature-based solutions 
and possibly additional benefits got from the management of water and trees together for air quality and tackling the urban heat island. This leads to an important point. Should urban foresters also be water engineers or water engineers also urban foresters? We've undertaken a literature review, um, very a global literature review on urban forestry as part of this project. This is what came out of it. These slides will be made available and because of time, I won't spend any time on that now. I'd just like to thank you on behalf of the Clearinghouse project and to the uh, funders, particularly uh, the Chinese MOST and the European Commission for their generosity and invite you to connect with us on social media. Thank you.